Today we're going to be making our grand return to the Path of Exile 2 subreddit and participating in discussions there that are thoughtful and worthwhile. Oh, uh, um, wait. Uh, mm, uh, maybe, maybe not. Didn't I just read this post? Wait, wait, wait a second. This is just... I... Mm, I just, I just, let's stay away from that community for just a little while longer until we get some more Path of Exile 2 information flowing in and stick within our own. Because a few weeks back, I posed a question to all of you asking you to give me your hottest Path of Exile 2 hot take. And I got a lot of really good ones and a ton of really bad ones. And those are the ones we're going to be looking at today. Most of these are just going to be for the laughs because some of them are absolutely bizarre, including claiming grinding your games as turning Path of Exile communist. And I don't know exactly how to respond to that question. So we're just probably going to laugh at it and move on. But if any of you know what the person means, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, we've got our first one from Ray Forston. PUE2 is a Chinese project. Don't let these New Zealanders fool you. Man, what are you on about? Grinding your games is in complete creative control for Path of Exile 2, just as they were with Path of Exile 1. The game in the West or anywhere but China is on a different realm from the Chinese realm, and they do make changes internally on the Chinese realm to Path of Exile 1, and it likely will happen for Path of Exile 2. However, the way the game is developed is in no way influenced by their investors, which are Tencent. They don't come in and dictate any design decisions, and that has never, ever happened in Path of Exile 1. All the money from Tencent has done has allowed Grinding Gear Games to invest in better and more talent over the years. The reason Path of Exile 2 is such a step above other ARPGs is because, yes, we support the game with our cash, but also because Tencent gave them a huge influx of cash as well. They were able to hire the best artists, the best animators, and let's not forget, take this long to make Path of Exile 2. I think if this was a Chinese project, this game would be out already, and it probably would have been half-baked. We would have seen it comparable to other ARPGs that released in a half-baked state. And that's not going to happen with Path of Exile 2, or at least that's not what I am being led to believe with Path of Exile 2. Not a Chinese project. It's helmed by Jonathan Rogers and Mark Roberts, who seem like the biggest New Zealanders or Kiwis out there. I mean, the lore of Path of Exile itself is based on... There's just... There's so many things wrong with this take. But I had to highlight it because this is the worst takes video. All right, we have another one here from Bruno Wa 8652 I think PUE2 may be too similar to PUE1. The fact that PUE1 endgame league mechanics like Ritual are going to be in there from the start does not get me excited, except for Blight. Gotta have Blight. PUE gets complaints of bloat. I'd rather new and interesting endgame mechanics as opposed to old stuff. Make the games different. Not the same same, but different. And I think endgame mechanics is where the games can be mostly differentiated. So there's some conflicting things here. We haven't seen any of the endgame yet, but I just like to focus on the fact that some people think that PUE1 may be too similar to PUE2. I don't think it's like that in the slightest. I do think back in 2023 at ExileCon when they were announced as being separate games, they were too similar then. But ever since then, Grinding Your Games has made strides in defining why PUE2 is truly a next generation ARPG. It's not just minor changes to the skill system and updates to the animations and graphics now. They've now rebuilt the game with WASD in mind. They have full controller support, cross-play, cross-progression, ouch co-op. All these classes have so much depth to them. The skill gem system has evolved tenfold since ExileCon 2023, as have the boss mechanics, the monster mechanics, and all the like. These games will be very different, even though PUE2 will be built on the bones of what makes Path of Exile 1 great. All right, and there's one right below that I don't think is the worst take, but I need to highlight it in this video nonetheless, because it's calling me out directly. Raw Rish Urz says, Nobody's opinion on a game matters right now because we're speculating based on a very small portion of the game and extrapolating it to the whole experience. You are bang on, dude. Uh, you are very, very right. However, 
I don't think that means that we can't talk about all this stuff that Grinding Gear Games has revealed because they already have this pre-existing product out, Path of Exile 1, and they are so open about the development of Path of Exile 2. If everything was in the shadows and we didn't know next to anything about Path of Exile 2, I would more so agree with you. But because we're getting a lot of information about the game, I think we can talk about it. You know, the things that aren't necessarily incredible to speculate about are things obviously that I talk about here on the channel, right? It's Ascendancies, it's Endgame. Those things are covered in mystery, but everything else, the campaign, the skill gem system, the classes, the combat mechanics, all the UI changes, consoles, all that, I think it's great to talk about. And it's good to have that discussion, especially since there's kind of a drought of news right now. You got to leave the Ascendancy and Endgame talk to the more unhinged individuals in the community that really are excited about all things Path of Exile 2. That includes myself and includes thousands of you out there who are watching all of my videos as well. Ooh, Mr. JMB said, Pee 2 at launch will be so bare bones that people will burn out on it and go back to Pee 1. It will be 0 0.3 rather than 0 0.7. <laughs> By the time Pee 2 hits 1.0, they will have lost all the momentum and will admit they launched early access too early. I completely disagree with Mr. JMB. They have been working on this since 2017. They have a bunch of content built out. The reason it's taken so long for this game to get out is because of all the fundamental system changes that they have made that have caused them to redo the game from the ground up which is something that a lot of other game development studios would not do. When WASD was introduced and they realized how good it felt on the Mercenary, which was a class whose skills were designed with WASD in mind, they realized they needed to go back, redesign skills, redo animations, redo all the levels and layouts because WASD was going to be integral to the game. They've also been working on consoles and making sure all that is going to run smoothly. They've been iterating on skill gem design. All while that's happening, different team members, different people are working on the actual content of the game. We've seen around 30 bosses and 30 areas of Path of Exile 2 so far. There are at least 100 in the campaign itself, and then there's going to be an end game built around that. The claim that this is going to be comparable to a 0.3 or 0.7, I, I'm not sure which ARPG you might be trying to compare to, whether it's Last Epoch, whether it's Diablo 4, whether it's Path of Exile, Please, you need to check yourself, my friend. Because if you go back to 0.3 or 0.7 of Path of Exile 1, that's two acts. That's like no endgame system. There's like the maelstrom of chaos that you run over and over again. There's no real bosses. It's when you didn't even have the Val Oversoul. I don't think Act 2 was finished at that point. You just had Merveil and not even a compelling version of Merveil. I think that this is totally off base and one of the worst hot takes that I have read. And it's not even a jokey hot take, right? This seems like a serious opinion. So if if you agree with Mr. JMB or Mr. JMB, if you are watching this video, please elaborate on your opinion why you think this is the case, because I am in complete disagreement with you. Okay, S. Von ARPGs, you are totally unhinged. Really quick one. EOE 3.26 in October. 0% chance of this happening. So sorry, my friend. We are on September the 19th. No announcement. Settlers of Calgary is going strong. It's the most successful league in Path of Exile history. There's no way that they're going to smush a Pee 1 league in between the Settlers of Calgary and Pee 2's early access. I think we're going to get a Pee 1 league in December at the earliest, but more likely January or February. All right, here's the most unhinged worst hot take so far. Knock Sivs says... Tencent will sell Grinding Gear Games to Microsoft, who will make Path of Exile 2 a paid product. They will also fuse Grinding Gear Games to Blizzard Studios and make them develop Diablo 5. Chris, Jonathan, and Mark will be replaced. <laughs> this, this is absolutely unhinged. I give this a 0% chance of happening. Thank you for making me laugh. I hope a lot of other people laughed as well. There is no world in which Tencent is going to sell off Grinding Gear Games to Microsoft. I don't think Microsoft would even be interested in acquiring Grinding Gear Games. I mean, maybe they would because um, but we won't get tribal here. No tribalism here. This just is not going to happen, my fellow exiles. <laughs> okay, Skill Rampage, I'm talking directly to you, my friend. 
pressing WASD eight hours every day will destroy my fingers. Hope normal movement will still be good. My friend, play eight hours a day, every single day, okay? And if you're doing that, I would invest into some sort of gamer mouse that allows you to control, you know, like a mini keyboard on your mouse or really think about your bindings if you're playing that long. Because yes, if you are clicking all these buttons all day, every day, you are going to destroy your fingers. Also consider doing some hand exercises. If you do so, you're going to save yourself in the long run. All right, another one by Dow Gear 8050. PUE 2 will kill PUE 1 slowly and gracefully, and I think Grinding Gear Games wants that to happen. I don't think that's true at all. I think Grinding Gear Games sees that they are creating two distinct products here between PUE 1 and PUE 2. PUE 1 is going to be ultra zoomy all the time. They're going to continue embracing that nature of the game and making the ceiling go higher and higher and higher over the years. Whereas Path of Exile 2, they want to be an engaging, meaningful experience. And that's going to be the big distinction between the games, right? They're going to have separate audiences with some overlap, yes. But if they're able to successfully maintain the two games, especially now that once PUB2 comes out and they have it running in a live service state, it's going to be much easier to manage PUE 1 and PUE 2 updates at the same time. I don't see any downsides here for them. If they are able to do it, it's just a big win for grinding your games. Other studios will just take Blizzard, for example, with Diablo 3 and Diablo 4, or we can take ArenaNet with Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2. If you are able to run two games concurrently that have overlapping audiences and new audiences as well that they're constantly bringing in, it's just an overall positive for the studio, for the community, and yeah, your, your shareholders, you're just going to make more money. So I think Grinding Gear Games is going to want to make that happen, especially because there are a lot of GGG devs that are core PV1 players that probably love that experience, like Mark Roberts. He obviously still loves Path of Exile 1. He still plays it, even though he has full access to Path of Exile 2 and works on it all day, almost every day. So I think both of them are going to coexist. And I don't think PV2 is going to kill out PV1. Let me know if you completely disagree with me in the comments. All right, another one from Polyfem102030. I think that boss design in PUE2 is awful. Nobody wants to spend 20 minutes on a boss in campaign when we just want to get to maps. My fellow exile, all of the bosses that we've seen so far are showcases from Grinding Gear Games to show us what the boss mechanics look like, what player mechanics look like. They're not you or me in the game with a build that we are trying to optimize at you know, the highest possible level to bring down the boss as fast as possible, which is the goal a lot of the times. Also, at the beginning, yes, they may be very difficult boss fights. You may be spending a lot of time on them, but the better you are at fighting them, the more you play the game, you, the faster you're going to get at fighting these bosses. It's just integral with everything. The first time I fought Merveil was way slower than me fighting Merveil now. Same with Kitava, same with Solaris and Lunara, same with the Maven, same with Cirrus. I can list bosses off. Everyone's saying every single boss fight is going to be a 20 minute slog. <laughs> Guys, that's being a little disingenuous, don't you think? I think in the beginning, yes, it's going to be harder. Yes, it's going to be slower. Yes, you're going to need to learn. But eventually, as with all games, as with all things in life, you will understand how to do it optimally, how to do it best. And then it won't be a slog. It won't be. And slog, I don't think, is the right word for me. I, I like the intense boss battles. I love sweating when I fight the Maven and uber bosses and the like. And it looks like Path of Exile 2 is just going to be doing that with way more variety. Still, you will improve over time and it will get easier and easier and easier. All right. And Bob DM 1MO, I think this will be Deadpool's last movie. And by Deadpool, I mean Pee 2. The Flask Piano, 10 steps back. Guys, we can micromanage players like all the new games. Slow them down and make them money. Also, we should start supporting American game companies because communism is taking over down under. I think he means New Zealand and Australia. GGG gets more and more commie every day. I'm not quite sure how to respond to this one. I'm just going to let it sit there, let it fester. If anybody knows what this person is trying to say, or Bob, you are watching this video, please elaborate because... I'm not sure what you mean. I don't know if you're talking about Tencent, but we addressed them at the top of the video. And those were some of the worst Path of Exile 2 hot takes from all of you in the community. If you'd like to defend yourself in the comments below, please go for it. And if you'd like to see more of these hot takes videos while we're in a news drought for Path of Exile 2, make sure you let me know in the comments below. 
The best way to support the channel, as always, is to hit the like button and subscribe to Talk to Try to see more PV2 and PV1 content in the future. It's completely free and it helps this channel grow up and up and up, leading to Path of Exile 2's early access and beyond. There's going to be a ton of stuff coming out, especially once we get more solidified information from Grinding Your Games. I have a ton of awesome plans. If you'd also like to monetarily support me and maybe turn this into something a little bit more serious, you can check over at my Patreon, which is in the description below, or just support here on YouTube. I greatly appreciate even just the thought. Anyways, that's all for this video. I will see you in the next video or in this one on screen right now. Alakura, my fellow exiles.